I'm Lisa Van Gammer, and I'm here to change your mind. Now, because that's a pretty aggressive idea, it might be helpful to know who I am if we haven't met before. I'm not very comfortable extolling my credentials ad nauseum, and I definitely don't want to sound like I'm just tooting my own horn, but it may be helpful to you in deciding that I'm qualified to have a strong opinion on this if you know a little bit about me. I've been a teacher, a school administrator, the Youth and Education Ambassador for Mensa, the expert consult to Lifetime's Child Genius show, and I've published four books in the field. I hold a Master's of Education, and I've spoken at literally hundreds of events and trained over 50,000 teachers in gifted education. Over a million people have visited my website, Gifted Guru, and if you would like to know even more, feel free to Google me or look me up on Wikipedia. But most importantly, my mission is to make the world safe for gifted kids. Now, here's a question I never would have thought you'd hear me say. Is grade retention a good idea for gifted kids? But recently, I've received emails from multiple teachers pleading for help in persuading parents not to redshirt or retain their gifted children. And when I read the first email, I actually laughed out loud. I mean, was this an April Fool's joke? But unfortunately, it was all too real. The emails kept coming, and I decided it was time to confront this issue in the hopes of saving children from a disastrous decision made by adults. Now, when we talk about retention, we mean that a child who has spent the full, full school year in a particular grade must repeat the entire grade just completed. And redshirting is when we hold a child back, delaying school entry, and that's typically done at the kindergarten level. And primarily, redshirting now is being done for athletics and recruiting, not academics. The teachers are asking for research on the effect of this on gifted kids so that they can share that research with parents. And here's why. The teachers already know this is a very, very bad idea, and they are desperate to save their students, whom they love, from a truly devastating error on the part of parents. So if you are a parent considering this, or if you have a friend who is, let me explain why this is a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad idea. Now, I'm going to cite a lot of research, and every study I mentioned will have its full citation in the description of this video. There has been a lot of research done on retention, and it is almost universally negative. If you're looking for a dissertation topic, I wouldn't pick this, because it's been beaten to death, and everyone knows the answer already. It doesn't work, and it doesn't help, especially in the long term, and especially with older children. If I'm not successful in persuading you, please read that research yourself. In a study published in 2019 in the Journal of Research on Educational Effectiveness, the researchers concluded that retention had a long-term detrimental effect on reading achievement. But it's not just reading. In a study published 10 years earlier in the Educational Evaluation and Policy Analysis Journal, the researchers found that first grade retention shows negative effects that stay almost constant from one year after retention to three years later. And in general, the study's authors found no evidence that early grade retention brought benefits to the retainees' reading and math learning toward the end of the elementary years. A longitudinal study that was published in School Psychology Quarterly that is frequently cited in other studies found what nearly every study on this subject finds. Here's what those researchers wrote. Results of this study failed to demonstrate the effectiveness of grade retention on academic achievement. Moreover, analysis of behavior suggests that retained students display more aggression during adolescence. And furthermore, the group of students recommended for transitional placement, but promoted anyway, were comparable to the control group in all achievement and behavior measures during high school. So, it doesn't even help the kids who it could be argued it was supposed to help academically. This study, the same study, found that retention was a greater predictor of later school dropout rates than academic performance. And the research on underachievement and gifted children indicates that inappropriate academic experience and placement or dissatisfaction with educational experience on the part of children leads them to drop out at much higher rates. So consider that for a moment. You could be making a decision now that could lead to your child actually dropping out later. Even the very few studies that found any benefit to grade retention at early elementary 
found it only then and only in the short term. And the long-term and negative consequences far overshadowed that benefit. In a Swiss study, the researchers concluded grade retention should be avoided at the primary school level. There is no specific research on the retention of gifted children, and you know why? It's academically indefensible. The deleterious effect of retention, both academically and psychosocially, on gifted children could be so great that it would be difficult to conduct the study. There is no academic benefit to retention, but there is plenty of possibility of harm. Consider some of these consequences. Socially, the student is losing their peers in a way that acceleration does not imply. They're being left behind and will have to explain why. While explaining acceleration is easily done with a simple statement, oh, they figured out that this is the grade I was supposed to be in, even very young students understand that repeating the same grade again is not desirable. There's an emotional cost as well because boredom is one of the greatest threats to emotional health of gifted children. And that problem is greatly exacerbated by repetition and repeating the same exact content again for a full grade is extremely undesirable. Humans do not as a rule like repetition and there is a cost there that I'll talk more about later. It is difficult to calculate the economic cost of retention. We know the average cost to a school district to retain a student is about $13,000. And I find it difficult to understand how a parent could explain to a taxpayer in their district that it's worth 13 grand to make sure that their child has an advantage in sports. That's a level of selfishness that I find it very difficult to defend. Another economic issue is the delay of the child into the workforce. I mean, if you're just going to be um, looking at it purely from money, the child is going to enter the workforce a year later, and we can't know what their salary would be, but let's just use the amount of $60,000. Even if none of that money were invested, and even if we didn't calculate the impact on retirement or on vesting in a company's retirement plan, we're faced with a significant reduction in lifelong learning, uh, lifelong earnings at least $60,000. As someone widely considered an expert in gifted education, I can say without hesitation or equivocation, I would never, ever, under any circumstances other than the most dire, such as severe trauma or illness, retain a cognitively gifted child. I can see no benefit to it whatsoever, either from the vast body of research or from my extensive professional experience. The child who is retained is at extreme risk of pathological boredom, and studies have shown that pathological boredom is just that, pathological. It even impacts physical health. In a study published in the Journal of Experimental Brain Research, the researchers found that individuals with high boredom proneness were more likely to have ADHD and depression. Now, no studies have been done to see whether this happens when we retain a mentally healthy child and intentionally induce boredom through school retention. Frankly, I see no way that this study could pass a review board. Can you imagine a researcher going to a board and saying, we want to take mentally healthy gifted children and try to induce mental illness by creating an environment in which they suffer extreme boredom? Yeah. I don't see that being approved anytime soon. According to reports from teachers, the intent is to give students an advantage, usually in athletics, rather than for any academic purpose. And that's pretty obvious because there really could be no academic purpose to retaining a gift to child. Messing with grade levels is more commonly done through delayed school entry rather than repetition so let's move on to that topic because this research all ties together. Now, when we're talking about red shirting or like delaying a kid, keeping a kid back earlier than what they would otherwise be, right? So like instead of being five when you're in kindergarten, now you're in six when you're in kindergarten. That's what we're talking about here. And I will say I blame Malcolm. In his 2000 book, Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell argues that a person's age relative to his or her grade level peers is a key predictor of success. So the older you are relative to others in your grade or like your baseball league, the more likely you are to do better than they do. Well, just like Gladwell's oversimplification of the 10,000 hour rule 
based on Erickson's extensive research, this is also a little more nuanced. And the research he used did not actually show what he said it showed. The study he cited for academic superiority doesn't really play out in the long term. It stopped at fourth grade. But what we find is that younger kids have a steeper learning acquisition path and they catch up pretty quickly. Even with sports, as this practice becomes more common, redshirting becomes more common, leagues are more likely to be age framed rather than by grade. In a long term study done on delaying school entry for redshirting, the authors concluded the results of this study shows that delaying kindergarten does not create any long-term advantages for students. Now there's an equity issue here too that I find distressing. A study published in Educational Evaluation and Policy Analysis found that redshirting was very much aligned with race, gender, and wealth. Here's a quote from the study. Male, white, and high SES socioeconomic status children are most likely to delay kindergarten and schools serving larger proportions of white and high income children have far higher rates of delayed entry. So I think you can pretty easily make the argument that if you delay school entry for your child's athletic benefit, you are perpetuating an inequitable system and that is also gender biased. Um, it is the, the research studies on this show that boys are far more likely to be retained than girls for these purposes. As retained students move through the grades, the benefit of being older actually declines. I mean, consider the ratio of the advantage. In a kindergartner, if you're a year older, that's a huge percentage of the amount of your life, right? Like, if you are, if you're six and everybody else around you is five, you have like a 20% more experience of being alive than they do. But that is a lot greater ratio than when people are 15 or 16. By then, many other factors such as genetics, opportunities, and home environment will play a greater role than simply time spent on the planet. There are negative consequences to redshirting as well. And in a study published in American Educational Research Journal, researchers found that redshirts and retainees are more likely to receive special education services than their peers who enter and are promoted on time. And you may think, oh, that won't happen to my kid because my kid is gifted. They're not gonna need special education. But consider that giftedness can be associated with all but two special education service qualifications. You can absolutely be gifted and require special education services. What the study is showing is that you're more likely to need those services should you be redshirted or retained. The study's authors concluded that given its lack of empirical efficacy, we do not support widespread use of this strategy for increasing readiness. And that was for kids who may actually be argued could use it. Kids who cannot yet read or don't know their letters or numbers. For gifted children, its effects are gonna be even more deleterious. In layman's terms, what the study is find, finding and what the research is saying is that there is no scientific evidence to show that this is good for kids, especially in the long term. But what about parents who delay their children's entry because they think the child just isn't ready for school? And in the case of gifted children, this is rarely an academic concern. The concern is almost always behavioral, maturational. But one difficulty with this is that we have to make the decision in the spring and the child still has months of important development before school starts. We also cannot predict at what rate the child will gain the skills we think they might be lacking. Gifted children are famous, or I guess rather infamous, for their asynchronous development. They're often you know, advanced in one or more areas and simultaneously delayed or on level in others. And keep in mind that they may appear delayed socially or emotionally because we're comparing them to their cognitive age. They think like they're 10 
instead of seven, so we expect them to act like they're 10 instead of seven. I cry foul. Yes, we may wish that they could sit longer, that they could listen more carefully, or that they could share better, but that's true of us as adults as well. And often these issues have less to do with the child's immaturity than they do with developmentally inappropriate expectations of children in school, like that a five-year-old boy be expected to sit in a desk all day. So let me wrap this up. Our children are not our avatars. We do not live vicariously through them, and we should never let our own desires to see them achieve what we wish we would have achieved lead us to make decisions that do not benefit them. In the case of retention and redshirting, this is a decision that could actually do a tremendous amount of harm. And to what end? Rather than retaining or delaying, a robust body of research exists that demonstrates the positive benefit of acceleration for gifted children. Parents, I, I truly plead with you. I plead with you as a fellow parent, an educator, and a grown-up gifted kid. Please, please do not do this to your gifted child. Please. You simply cannot foresee the harm that this could do and you could end up with a child full of resentment towards you forever. There is little in educational, in education or parenting that is 100% sure, but this is one of those few things we know. This is a very, very bad idea. The only kind of retention gifted children should be experiencing is retention of knowledge and retention of memories of appropriate school placement done in their very best interests. I hope this has been helpful to you in making your decision, and should you still be on the fence, I would invite you to read all of the studies cited below and conduct even more of your own research. I think you will find that for gifted children in particular, the best decision is to not hold them back in any way.